Feature Friday. The freshest. <sighs> Since we enjoy checking out classical Indian singers, uh, one of the legends that we're yet to check out um, is Kishori Amonkar. She she passed away a, a few years back in 2017, and and she's considered she was considered one of the leading. Uh, uh, at the time and obviously now a, a legendary and a lot of people that uh, a legendary figure and a lot of people look up to her in terms of classical singing oh. so this is very intriguing because it's like an eight minute piece um, and it's been a while since we checked out you know kind of more purist forms of, of, of approaches to music and uh, let's give it a watch let's try to keep learning and let's perhaps some things we observe and okay. some things if you like to drop any comments or any perhaps uh, memorable performance that she had made, uh, do let us know and uh, we'll be more than happy to check them out as well. Okay, let's have a look. <laughs> It is accurate. No, here's the thing. What you're hearing is not note accuracy. It's not just that. You're hearing a very classical Western technique right. applied to Indian classical singing. So the positioning of her larynx and high, high lifted soft palate singing to the back of the head, it is beautiful because it gives this really smooth sounding note that is continuous, but is very rounded. In comparison to other uh, classic, uh, classical Indian singing that we have seen, women tend to be quite soprano, so, sopranos, right? But they tend to be quite twangy. She doesn't have any twang. So what you're hearing is not a, a note that's coming down through the nose. It's actually a note that is being lifted from the back of the soft palate. It's a note that is similar to some of the techniques I'm actually familiar with. Oh, right. well, <laughs> so, it is quite interesting because uh, it seems that the pinnacle level of, of classical singing, mm. um, perhaps techniques that were brought from the East to the West, uh, kind of merge at yes. some point, right? And maybe this is, given the fact that, you know, she, she was doing this for so many years, maybe this is what you're seeing, the complete evolution then perhaps of what a yeah an outstanding singer sounds like and the agglomeration of different techniques you can apply to things. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, here's a little fun fact. A harmonium yes. in English, it's actually called a pump organ. A pump organ? Yeah, that's what it is. And, oh. and uh, it's called a harmonium in India. Oh. And that's how, as it's known. I mean, obviously, if you were to buy one, I think if you say harmonium, you'd be... People will know. But like, it's, it, literally, it means pump organ. Right. Yeah. And what you're, you're, what you're about to see here, um, it's more of the completion that the harmonium brings to classical singing because you'll see that sometimes some of the singing phrases will be finished by the harmonium not nice her. she's holding something yeah it's like a, a harp yeah i think it's a harp do you see that lifted singing modulation is very similar to Classical operatic singing. Wow. Zero twang there. And actually, you hear the break of the voice because there's no twang. Well, she so the larynx, said at the beginning, right? Yeah, the larynx are not actually being lifted by twang. Crazy. Uh, no, they're actually being opened. So there's there's space for little crackles and readjustments of the larynx. This is actually the hardest approach to the Indian classical singing that I have ever witnessed. Whoa. Not that I have witnessed much, but... <laughs> <laughs> This is such an ethereal picture though, it. isn't it? Everybody's so harmoni harmonious with their instrument. Oh, 
I want to replicate that so hard. And if you pay attention, look at how small her vocal, uh, her mouth modulation, modulation is. Right? It's actually really, and how not, how not lifted her cheekbones are. If she was singing with uh, the twangy technique, she would be uh, inclined to h heighten the cheekbones. So that means she would smile through singing the notes or the, the note would actually come down through the nose. And gives you this sound down here. It's, ve it's very down through the nose. In this particular case, actually, her mouth and how her cheekbone and jaw positioning is set it's taking away all of that twang. She's actually grounding it to the chest. Bro, this is really so confusing it's to really, me. It's really interesting <laughs> because those were the principles that we thought were kind of, yeah, pillar principles when we were kind of, well, we were still continuing to learn and break down more classical music. Those were some of the, what would you call it, common denominators. Yes. But now it seems that by one of the most legendary and leading forms of Indian classical singer, uh, singing, she utilizes perhaps a much more different approach to what we first thought was a... Or maybe it's a combination of both of the... Maybe it could be just the piece. I don't know. It could be just about the performance. Maybe it is about this particular scale that they're working on. True. Maybe if it was a higher uh, a key on the song itself, she would maybe require she would require certain different techniques. settings. And yeah. the cool thing is, as I always mention, is it's really hard to utilize a criteria, which a criteria of critique of mm. singing that you've learned from the West when you are perhaps learning about East, the Eastern approaches to things. And, and not it, only that, but it's so culturally unique that you can't approach you, it with the same criteria. Yeah, you can't utilize the same criteria no. of singing, of what no. like you know what techniques apply to specific things. Mm -hmm. This is why this is so intriguing because it's more like um, it's more like um, a complete new discovery, sort of a similar to the cinema experience that we're having yes. with the Indian uh, uh, cinema industry. Um, By the way, tune in this Sunday at 12 p.m. UK time to check us, uh, check us out and our review on Bajirao Mastani for the woo, first time. Woo, I love that movie, bro. <laughs> Go on. Yeah, Spoiler first, alert, yeah. I already spoiled my opinion. <laughs> You see what I'm talking about now? That right there, you have that twang that I was talking about. Oh, wow. So it is perhaps done because of the choices and the key. But yeah, right there, you hear that. But you see, you can hear the shift, right? From the smoother sound, the higher lifters of palate, to the really uh, um, sharp edge of using twang to height, heighten the larynx itself. Right. You can see how her cheekbones actually lift too. Whew. She's really mixing both. Can you also see how the mouth actually is, tends to open more as well? Right. Sweetness. 
I'm saying you notice that about I think that wasn't the harmonium. I don't can't see what instrument that is, but the melody was actually carried and continued by that instrument, and then she started another one. Yes. So it's as if they're starting many many branches from the same root. Yes. It's really cool. I like that principle a lot, and I, and I, I'm trying to think of how you could bring that into other music. It is. Is I suppose that the principle already exists. Is like that overlaying the the uh, you no, know very, cross uh, cross phrasing sections. You don't and songs do that with instruments. No, you very don't. Rarely. I like, agree. For example, it's not like I'm playing an E major, right, on the guitar, mm -hmm. right, and you will you will sing in E major. You will say, uh, "My love, oh my lovely person," right, in E major. Mm -hmm. I will then finish your person, mm -hmm. that phrase of person, in A minor, right. And, and I will start. And you will start in, in C. Mm -hmm. But we'll meet again in E major. Yeah. Not in C. Then That's I... really fucking crazy. That's like, you don't see that. I don't think, I don't, I don't think I've ever experienced that, at least uh, uh, in the music I know. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I think it's really, also, it's really hard uh, to, to replicate that with the strumming instrument has to be something that Continuous. it provides like a yeah violin. exactly something that provides a continuous note or a continuous melody because it's either a strings uh, or a, a string instrument or, or a wind instrument so they provide really smooth uh, ever flowing continuous notes and yeah. therefore you are then have a bit more freedom to vocally jump into different uh, parts in in a bar for example yeah, yeah. right so but the time signature here is so completely comp hard it's so hard so that it i don't really know where the phrases start i don't really know where they end or it, yeah it's and based on your information that you have shared with us it's a uh, a lot of it is really pretty much about like in the moment it's yeah. like inspired well no the, the, this it's it's not a it's not a um what would you call it a, uh, what do you call it? Improvisation. It's not, an, it's not improv. Oh, it so this memorized. is an actual song. Yep. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, even harder to yeah, yeah. my the, brain. To us, it may seem, to the untrained eye like us, it may seem like it's a sort of like uh, improvisation, but it's not. It's just because I same can't as, see the beginning as, of bars. Same as rag. Yeah. It may seem like rag is an improvisation, like but scatting or riffing or, or showcasing vocal, but it's not. It, there's a predetermined path. Crazy, yeah. Right? No matter, as a matter of fact, it's a predetermined path that you must abide to. Madness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Madness. Go on. Madness. Discovered in Indian jam project. Sing Singari. Sarangi. Sarangi. I think that's what's I reproducing so. the notes that she's singing. Could be. Sarangi. Sarangi, I think. Yeah, so I think the Sarangi Sarangi is literally copying the singing phrase in certain moments and then it's continuing the the note pattern and then catching it up back in the next bar or something like that. Ah, I think so. So Tampura is the, the one... That the girl in the back behind yeah. her is playing, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
like so little, it's so crazy to look at. Yeah, that's the ending. Okay, interesting, because they always speed up towards the end of maybe a, like, like, like a, a verse-like section. Like section. Yeah. What? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, what a way to take me out of that. I was in a trance because it's so... Take away the technicalities that I literally do not understand because there's no way I could possibly understand it. I need well, to... Only now I, is that we're actually learning the names of things and we're genuinely trying to... Like, for example, I screenshotted uh, this um, comment from you guys, uh -huh. which I thought was very informative and helpful. Um, it went along the lines of... Any classical singing has two... Uh, fun Foundational elements. Okay. Rag and yes. tala. Yes. The rag, based on a, a, on a varied repertoire of swara, which are notes, including micronotes, uh, forms the fabric of a deeply intricate melodic, a melodic structure. Okay. Uh, while the tala measures the time cycle. So that would be... Tabla. Uh -huh. Maybe the tabla is what she means. Maybe they misspelled it. No. I don't I, know. No, I don't know. Just keep reading. Uh, there is <laughs> three, three basic layers to the texture of Indian singing. Melody, voice sitar, sarangi, bansuri, esrag, and sarot, performing the melodic form of rag. Mm -hmm. The drone, which is the tampura or harmonium, performing the long sustained notes. Mm -hmm. And then the rhythm, which is the tabla, performing the rhythmic tala. The yeah, no, it is tala. It is a tala. Uh, and the seven swaras, which are like the different types of uh, rags. Rag. Mm -hmm. uh, which is sa, re, ga, ma, pa, pa. and da. Ani. Saragam mapana. What? Uh, sa, sa re, sa, sa re, re, ga, ga ma, ma, pa, da, da ni. Da, ni. That's what sa, we were seeing. Uh, uh, wow. Kaushiki be doing that stuff. Well, yes. very intriguing. So yes. we're learning as we go, That's guys. That's pretty crazy, people. I um, mean, what? Let us know what you guys thought about it. And uh, apart from that, thanks for watching. Okay.